So this week is um, just a continuation of what we did last month. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is to prepare the plate. I want some metallic collage elements that um, are going to go on the print from last time. So I'm going to take, uh, I've got the 6x6 six six plate, the gel press plate here. And I'm just going to take and tear um, a couple pieces of deli paper and put them down. I want to do it really random. Um, I want it to be very sort of an organic tear. I don't want straight edges. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, this is just a really cheap set of pastels from one of the big box stores. And I've got that and I've got a single edge razor blade. So I'm going to take, I think I'll use this orange here. So I'm taking the orange pastel and I'm taking the single edge razor blade and I'm going to just put some pastel powder onto the plate. And now I'm gonna put some paint over that. This is my palette pad, and I'm gonna use some golden um, heavy body teal. And some iridescent copper. I'm gonna start with the teal. Rolling it on my brayer on the palette paper. And I'm gonna roll it on there. So I've cleaned the brayer off a bit. I'm gonna put this stencil on here. It's the same size as the plate. And I'm gonna gather up some of my red and just roll it over here. I don't want a whole lot of the red. We'll pull that off. We've got a nice little pattern going there. And now I've got copper on my brayer. And I'm just gonna put a light coat of the copper. So I'm gathering up some more teal and putting another layer of the teal and then um, I'm going to pull up the mask that's the deli paper so now I'm going to just let that dry it's going to take a few minutes so um, hopefully you remember this print um, from last month and I said I was going to continue on with it so that's what we're going to do today I've done some prep work. I have added another line of acemic writing up here um, with the Windsor Newton masking fluid uh, put into the fine line applicator tool. So that's already been done and left to dry. Then I have just taken pieces of paper and blue tape and just masked out uh, my design that's in the center here. So these were just three by three inch squares from the little square plate. And then this is the joggle stamp. So I just stamped this onto a piece of scrap paper. So I was using the exact image, the exact size. And then I'm just gonna tape that down over there. So those areas for right now are gonna remain the same. I, what I think I wanna do is sort of darken the bottom and emphasize the circular um, pattern that we put in there with the impressibles and I want to lighten the top a little bit so that's kind of where I'm coming from so I want to make this a little oranger and this a little bit whiter um, so let's see if we can make that happen 
So I'm going to um, use the quinacridone nickel azo gold again. You know, everybody's favorite color for the bottom of the print. And now I am using the open acrylic. And I am going to add to that just a little bit of red. I'd really like a quinacridone burnt orange, but I'm out of it. And then I'm also gonna add to this a little bit of this Van Dyke Brown, just to keep it earthy. So, and then I'm just gonna mix that up, see what color it comes up to be. There we go. I've got a piece of paper the same size as the people, piece of paper I'm working um, that the print is on uh, for registration purposes. And I've got my plate arranged um, right where I want it. So there, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And then um, I'm gonna use this circle stencil which is by stencilgirlproducts.com and put it here. Um, it's different from the Impressible, but there's enough similarities to it um, that I think I'm gonna like it. And then I'm gonna clean this off up here. Yeah, I'm gonna try to, I think I'm just gonna try to kind of fade it out so I get kind of a softer line up there. All right, so that's kind of cool. I got this great texture going on the bottom there over the top of the impressible. So you can see the circle within a circle with the impressible behind it. It's exactly what I was hoping would happen. So now the next thing I want to do is to lighten this up a bit. I want more contrast between my top and my bottom. So, and I'm gonna do that with um, Titan Buff, which is a warm white color. So here it is, Titan Buff. Can't get too light or the writing won't show up. So then I'm gonna scrape a little bit off of the previous um, palette page and mix it in there. So I'm going to pick that up with my brayer. This one, it's a lovely overall pattern and I think it'll be quite beautiful up there like to get it straight. There we go. And then I'll take my rag again and sort of blend out that. So we're going to have a hard line here, but I don't want two hard lines in succession. So it's lighter and we got a little pattern, but I do like the lightness of it. I love this area here where there's lights and darks and mediums. I'd like to get some of that going over there. So let me find another stencil. So I'm putting some Titan Buff down here. And I want just a teeny little bit of the Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Not too much. I'm going to mix that. And again, we're going to brayer the bottom of the plate. A 
Okay, so I've got my lighter color. I'm gonna put my stencil on there. It's great that this plate is 12 inches and the stencils are 12 inches. And I'm gonna take my rag again and feather that edge. some areas of lighter color which are kind of cool now it's really interesting down there these things are getting interesting in keeping with my geometric theme here I've got out the um, little triangle that comes in the petites um, kit with the square and the circle so I am going to try to print a triangle over the top of these squares so I'm going to take teal and this is where you want to pay attention to the opacity of your paints. Teal is very opaque. And a teal is what this is here. So I don't want that color exactly. So I am going to mix it with some titanium white. So I'm going to ink up my little triangle here. And I'm going to use my joggles stamp with the circles that I used on the square behind it. Put it down, get a little twist, pull it up. Again up there. And again over here. So now I've got a little bit of pattern on there. And I'm going to go back to my big print and I'm going to use this as a stamp and I'm going to stamp it onto the square here and that worked very cool makes me pretty happy. I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to go back to work on those collage elements that I started before. So here's the plate I did earlier with the um, pastel powders and the schminky powder and the iridescent paint. So now I've got some packing tape and I'm going to take packing tape. This is completely dry. Gonna burnish them down really well. So the paint comes off on the packing tape, and we've got spaces in the paint where we had the mask. But anyway, it's it's really 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 cool. I don't know how much you can see, but that little iridescent uh, sparkle is in there. Um, along with the various colors of paint. So we've got the, the red pastel, and you can see a little of the copper paint, and you can see the um, iridescence of the schminky powder. And now I'm gonna take a sheet of this variegated leaf, because it's got all the colors of my print in it. And I'm gonna stick it to that. So now I've got this pretty, pretty um, variegated collage element that I'm going to put on my piece. So I've cleaned up my brayer a little bit and I've put out some regular teal paint and I'm just going to ink up the stamp. So I'm inking up the stamp because I kind of lost part of it here and I want to put it back down. Now it's not going to be exact and that's fine. but I wanted it to be on top. And I like the way it actually looks like the one that was there previously 
it has become a shadow underneath. I'm going to do that to all three of them. So um, let's let that dry and then we'll peel up the mask up there and let's work on the collage pieces. Okay, so I've got my collage pieces here and I'm just going to cut them into some little rectangles. Going along with the geometry of the piece. And I'm going to put this one here. We forgot, I forgot to take the masking fluid off. Oh, so that gave me a little shadow underneath the writing. So yeah, so there's just a little shadow uh, behind that writing of the original gold that was there and it's really kind of cool. It adds some depth to that. So now we have our actual print. I'll probably put a little bit of medium underneath these metallic pieces um, to keep them there. Um, but I'm liking the way this looks. So anyway, thanks for staying with me and we'll show you something new next month. Bye-bye!